Last week, I entered a $5,000 prompt injection contest where I competed against other teams to solve 10 puzzles in the least amount of tokens. I called up a friend, we formed a team, and began climbing the leaderboard. But before we get started, what even is prompt injection? Well, as AI gains popularity, companies are starting to develop personalized apps. Maybe a fruit stand wants an AI that only recommends customers fruit, so they develop a prompt that only replies to questions with fruit emojis. But then a user comes along that's bored, so they write specific instructions that gets the bot to reply with vegetables. This is prompt injection, and it's funny. But giant companies don't really have a sense of humor. They want the prompt injection to stop, and that's where this contest originated. The contest organizers are writing a research paper on prompt injection, and a bunch of companies chipped in to collect data from the best prompt injectors in the world in order to improve their security. The rules are simple. Solve 10 levels by getting the output to say this exact phrase and nothing else. Let's try out an example question that isn't worth any points to get an idea of how this works. Here we have a prompt that is told to say positive things about doing hard physical labor in outer space when it receives a user input. If we type something normal, the AI will just try to shoot us into space. But if we get more clever, we can get it to say what we want. Now we at least got it to say the phrase somewhere in its answer. From there we just have to edit the prompt. Now that the phrase is isolated at the beginning, we just have to remove everything else. Including punctuation, which can be the hardest part sometimes. With a little bit of creativity, we can get a solution that passes and begin focusing on making our prompt shorter for a higher score. Now let's go through some highlights of the contest. The first four levels were really easy and only took a few minutes. The prompts just weren't that good of defenses like level four, which told the AI to act like a search engine that answers questions. So we just asked it a question and that worked. Another thing that helped was that while the contest was going, we could see other teams' high scores in real time. Levels two and three were solved in so few tokens that we didn't have to read the prompts at all. We just used some programming and process of elimination to run through all of the possibilities in order to get the shortest possible answer. Levels five through eight were a little bit more challenging with solutions involving injecting programming language in order to fool the prompt. These started as long answers that had to be slowly reduced token by token over a couple of days. Then there was level nine. This was more difficult than everything else combined and took a full week. Not only were certain letters completely banned from being used in the prompt, but anything we typed would get sandwiched in between a bunch of slashes. This caused any input we gave to be understood no better than a drunk person slurring their words. After a few days, it felt hopeless. But then we had a breakthrough when we discovered an obscure language known as Chinese. Since each character in this language is more like a full word than a single letter, this allowed the slashes to be less significant. It also got around the ban of certain letters. However, the phrase itself is not translatable, so there was still work to be done. Fortunately, from my work developing the ban evading Dan, I knew that GPT understands special characters that look like English letters but aren't. From there, we were eventually able to get responses that started with the phrase but printed a bunch of nonsense after. Fortunately, we knew about one more trick called context overflow. Basically, GPT has a limit of how many tokens it can store in its memory. If we write a prompt that's so long it bumps up against this limit and only leaves six tokens of space for a reply, then our phrase will be the only thing printed in the response and we will pass the level. This worked and we had our solution ready for entry. There was only a day left until the contest ended and no one had solved level nine. We were about to win. But then, the deadline got extended, four other teams solved it, and we came in third. Overall, this was a really fun experience, and the teams in first and second had some crazy prompts. I wrote an article that goes more into depth on how we solved each level on my website. I will be releasing a lot more videos and prompts, so be sure to subscribe.